Right, hello. Uh, welcome to my official Jurassic World Dominion review with no spoilers. So anybody who is worried, don't be worried. There are no spoilers within this video. As you guys can see, I'm going to move away here. Uh, we are, well, it's, it's very dark outside. And uh, that's because I've just come from a half 10, 11 p.m. screening of Jurassic World Dominion. And this is officially the second time I've watched it. By the time you are watching this video, I would have seen it at least three times, possibly four, depending if you watch this after June 7th. But yeah, so I'm still in my hotel room and I have a makeshift microphone, well, my usual microphone, but I've never really held it before. So I'm hoping I don't make too much noise, too much clatter across the microphone. I can see my laptop down there. We're recording fine so far. But yeah, so let's get into the review for Jurassic World Dominion with no spoilers whatsoever. Where to begin? Upon my first viewing, it was something terrific. It really was. It was just something that blew me away. Everything was well choreographed, well scripted. And especially when it comes to the cinematography, I feel like Jurassic World Dominion absolutely excels. There are some scenes out there which are just simply phenomenal and outstanding that you can't really match that in any Jurassic movie and heck, even any movie at all. Obviously, you have the movies like No Way Home and Avengers Endgame, which in, in themselves are terrific movies, absolutely fantastic movies with incredible cinematography. But Jurassic World Dominion, for some unknown reason, makes it look so good, but it's so vastly different to what we see from all of these superhero movies. And I feel like Jurassic World Dominion's biggest excelling moment would have to simply be the cinematography. I can't get over some of the scenes there. Some of the CGI, especially for the Therizinosaurus scenes, are incredible they just i i, I mean I can't, i'm still not over them i've seen it twice now and i'm still not over how good that therizinosaurus looks within jurassic world dominion now as i am an unbiased reviewer despite my super fan channel uh we are going to talk about pros and cons starting with pros obviously now we just discussed cinematography let me get you started on the story the story is very good there are cons to it obviously but we'll talk about the pros for now the story of Jurassic World Dominion is something spectacular, it really is, and the way that they've kind of weaved in the Jurassic World characters with the Jurassic Park characters and the two storylines, as Bryce Dallas Howard did say, intersect, and they intersect so well and naturally that it seems like there should have been more discussion regarding it, but in a natural sense, and a natural tone, there wasn't, and it kind of, it kind of came across really, really good, and I felt like it was well scripted and well written to the point where you can enjoy this movie any time you watch it. Whereas with Fallen Kingdom, sometimes it's not that good, not that fun. So it's intriguing to see where they go with this franchise, continuing this story. Because they definitely left the movie on an open book, as we knew was going to happen for the past three years or so. And they left it open enough that most of the characters could actually return in future Jurassic series, TV shows... And I mean, even other future movies, who knows? But again, it had a really good story. And I know some people were kind of reading some sort of leak online and they said the story sounds very silly. But actually, once you see it, it's great. It actually ties in really well to the Jurassic universe. It kind of gets put together really nicely. And again, as I said, the Jurassic World timeline and the Jurassic Park timelines kind of intersect so nicely and naturally that it just feels normal and really good. Now, when we talk about the new characters, obviously we have Kayla Watts and Mamadou Afi's Ramsey Cole. Now, for me, Kayla Watts had a little bit of a comedic factor into Jurassic, which is what we kind of needed through multiple movies now and TV shows. The comedic value wasn't really there for Jurassic, and that's something I've noticed after watching Star Wars, after watching the MCU and all of that stuff. Jurassic kind of just lacked some sort of uh, comedic factor and Kayla definitely brought that to Jurassic World Dominion however for me it kind of felt like her character was very underwhelming it didn't seem like she was very important to the storyline although she very much was at the same time I know that's confusing once you see the movie or have seen the movie you kind of get an idea of what I'm on about here but when we discuss Ramsey Cole he is such a good character that I want to see him in a future Jurassic movie, I simply do. The way he was able to, you know, set a boundary about who he is in this movie and then all of a sudden have some sort of character arc, which again, I'm trying not to spoil, but it's so good that you want to see more of him. You want to see 
more of Ramsey Cole. We want to see how he can help the future of this world where dinosaurs are still stuck in their natural habitats. And I felt like Ramsey Cole was written very, very well. Another character which I never thought I'd ever see a redemption from would be Maisie Lockwood. As many people probably know, Fallen Kingdom has a really bad rep, and understandably so. It's not the best movie in the franchise, and personally for me, I feel like it might even be the worst in the franchise. But it's still enjoyable, and you can watch it. I still like it, personally. But one of the things that I really didn't like was Maisie Lockwood and Isabella Sermon's character. She was, I don't know, annoying <laughs> in Fallen Kingdom, and I felt like it just it wasn't fun to have her there. My goodness, Jurassic World Dominion turned that around. Isabella Sermon absolutely killed it with Maisie Lockwood this time around. She actually portrayed a 14-year-old exactly how a 14-year-old would come across. Nothing too corny, nothing too cringy, but almost perfect. And I felt like she was able to depict Maisie Lockwood in such a better, I'm struggling for a word here, fashion, let's say, that Maisie Lockwood slowly became one of my favorite characters of the Jurassic World trilogy. So, I mean, hopefully we get to see her in future movies because the way that she was portrayed in Jurassic World Dominion was simply fantastic and Isabella Sermon, you did brilliant. Now again, I've only seen the movie twice. I still have many, many positives that I probably can't think of right now. But if you want my honest opinions as time goes on, feel free to go follow my Twitter. Check out my Twitter because I will tweet all of my thoughts regarding Jurassic World Dominion over on there. I actually have some cons here on my phone simply because I want a fair review. I don't want it just to be for Jurassic fans, you know. The general audience needs to have an understanding of what to expect for this movie as well. But one of the main cons that I've actually got written down here and I believe still sticks to that factor, even after watching it twice, uh, sometimes it's too consistently fast-paced and is overwhelming to take everything in. Now, that might sound confusing at first, Let's just say they kind of get straight into the storyline in Jurassic World Dominion, especially when the original characters come together. It seems as if we didn't really have any time to explore their backstory too much. There was a clip on YouTube re recently released regarding Eddie Sattler and Alan Grant. Don't worry, it's officially released, so you can check that out if you want to or not. But that was about the only backstory we got regarding our characters, and there really wasn't too much besides that. So if it, it kind of felt like we were just pushed into the storyline straight away and it was just so, I want to say, just too fast to the point where pacing was kind of up, then down, then up, then down and that kind of got a bit confusing for Jurassic World Dominion, unfortunately. Um, but again, you know, you can kind of look, overlook those things once you gather the whole storyline at the end of the movie. But whilst it's going on, it just feels a bit different, a bit off. I can't really pinpoint why or how, but it just feels a little bit off around the start of the movie. And the second one I have here is that the animatronics sometimes look robotic-y, if that's a word. Um, they're very much... They didn't really try to hide the fact that animatronics were used, especially for creatures like the Giga, Dimetrodon, and especially the Dilophosaurus. You can definitely tell that animatronics were used, and I felt like the way that they could have covered this up was to do some sort of masking with a little bit of CGI, that way you can make the dinosaurs feel a little bit more natural and they just didn't look like robots moving around. There's one scene in particular that appeared in the Jurassic World Dominion trailer where you actually do get to see the Giganotosaurus and its animatronic in full, but the animatronic is... let's just say you can notice it's definitely an animatronic. It's just a, it's a bit odd that the Giganotosaurus just kind of stood there, didn't move forward because you can clearly see that the animatronic was not built to move forward. So you can definitely see that at times. And I know I said masking it with the CGI would be good, and that's because that's a mix of both. Now, when they move on to the CGI and simply only CGI, there are some shots that are just brilliant throughout Jurassic World Dominion with CGI only. And I guarantee that the Ferrazinosaurus will most likely be voted as the best dinosaur via CGI in Jurassic World Dominion. But there are some scenes with the CGI that have some issues, most noticeably with Blue, and unfortunately that kind of takes you out of the immersion of the movie a little bit, and it just feels a bit odd, a bit unsatisfying, and you felt like they could have done a little bit better. Yes, technically they were the first movie to film after the pandemic and when everybody opened back up, but then again they kind of had an extra year to sort out the CGI, so I was slightly disappointed in some scenes, not all of them, granted, there are many good CGI dinosaurs out there, but there were some scenes where I felt like the CGI was 
underperforming to the level of ju what Jurassic is at. And as I did say earlier in the movie, Kayla's character is a bit off, I guess, in a way. It was just, you know, I, in a way, in some aspects, you can see she's a good written character, but at the same time, when you look at it as a whole, she can also be a bad written character as well. But I, I'm interested to see her story. She definitely has potential, and hopefully, if we do get to see her in future Jurassic movies, we will get to see a better side of her, something that we get more intriguing about her, because there is definitely a lot of story to tell with Kayla Watts. But overall, I gave Jurassic World Dominion originally a 9, literally minutes after watching it for the first time, and then when I started to sit down and think it through a little bit, I decided to give it an 8.5 instead. Now, realistically, I should technically be going lower and lower, but the movie is really enjoyable. Overall, it's really enjoyable. Jurassic fan, non-Jurassic fan, general audience, somebody who understands the movies, or somebody who has watched Camp Cretaceous, the short films, the motion comics, the VR games, and all of the movies, no matter who you are, you will enjoy Jurassic World Dominion. It's a very enjoyable movie, completely action-packed, and the story is simply fantastic. It really is. That being said, I think I will lower my rating just a little bit to 8.3, but technically we can round it up to 8.5 anyways. And that comes in at roughly, probably actually, my second favourite Jurassic film. Obviously, you can't beat the OG, Jurassic Park. It's up there, it's number one, it's fantastic. That's the 10 out of 10 that they are trying to beat. But as for now, Jurassic World Dominion, for me, is stuck in second place, but it's done very well. Obviously, we'll probably see more from the movie when we do get the DVD released, and when I actually watch it a few more times. My ratings will obviously change, as opinions do change as well. But at this point in time, June 3rd, 2022, after watching it twice, I'd say that my rating is 8.3 out of 10. It's it's really good, honestly. It's so, so good. I'd recommend watching it. Again, as I said, no matter who you are, you're going to love Jurassic World Dominion. And it's a fun watch. It's something if you want a Chinese takeout, you order that takeout, and you have two and a half hours to eat that takeout whilst watching dinosaurs in natural habitats in the world and killing people. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching today's Jurassic World Dominion review. If you want to know spoilers and or you've already seen the movie and you want to discuss some actual things regarding what appeared in Jurassic World Dominion, stay tuned on the channel as we will be posting a spoiler filled review simply talking about my favourite scenes, what we noticed such as the Camp Cretaceous references which were awesome, and where this franchise is going after what took place in Jurassic World Dominion especially Camp Cretaceous Season 5. I'm very excited to see that, especially since a certain something appeared in that trailer that also appeared in Dominion. But anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. There'll be more to come on Jurassic World Dominion on this YouTube channel, so if you're at all excited for Jurassic World Dominion, or you've seen it, or you want more reviews, feel free to press that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss an upload. But from me, within the Netherlands, because I decided to fly over here just to watch the movie, I hope you all had a fantastic day today. But most importantly, all I ask for from you guys today is to stay safe up there. And I can't wait to see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.